Welcome to the, uh, the second day of the CNI conference, uh, second morning, um, the hangover morning. Um, uh, I'm Todd Grappone. I'm Associate University Librarian at uh, University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, with me is uh, Tricia Cruz, um, who's uh, at uh, California Digital Library, heading up the uh, UC3, the uh, Data Curation Center at um, uh, at CDL, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, a project that we've um, been working on for the past few months. Um, it's uh, uh, a tool that we're developing to create data management plans, uh, a simple online uh, web form. Um, <clears throat> Trisha and I are uh, going to speak for, uh, make some brief comments, hopefully uh, 10 to 15 minutes. And then we really wanted to have an opening, open discussion about uh, the tool and its, uh, uh, what it's going to be uh, and what it's not going to be. Um, and we're hoping to really engage the audience in that. We're really at a very formative stage in, in the tool development, uh, and we feel that um, uh, getting some feedback right now where we are uh, is really going to help us in our tool development. Um, I'm really going to talk a little bit about uh, the tool uh, and what we hope to do, get some background. Uh, for you, and Trish is going to uh, show some uh, uh, screenshots of the tool itself, and hopefully uh, that'll get us talking about um, uh, about the tool. I get the slides. Great. Uh, so um, we've really been, uh, uh, as an industry, sort of talking about data for the past few years. Um, and we've been talking about it in a number of different ways. Uh, and it really occurred to me as the NSF came up with their requirements in January, this was one of the um, real substantive ways um, that a data um, is going to have an impact on the way uh, scholarship uh, is managed, uh, the way the uh, grant application is managed. Um, this new requirement really uh, uh, forces uh, people to consider these uh, resources they create as part of their scholarship um, right up front. And so we're, we're taking that opportunity to um, uh, provide some simple tools for the users to, and hopefully give them some um, uh, ways, uh, new ways to think and use their data. So what is it about data? You know, it's sort of like, uh, this is kind of how we feel when we think about data. We're lion tamers um, out there uh, working with um, large e-science data, uh, lots and lots of digital humanities projects that produce lots and lots of small data sets. Um, uh, I would like to mention uh, this uh, data management plan online tool we're creating is a, uh, is a, a collaboration of eight institutions. Um, within the UC system, we've got UCLA, UCSD, CDL, <laughs> but we also have uh, folks from outside the UC system, uh, University of Illinois, the Smithsonian Institution, uh, University of Virginia, um, and the Digital Curation Center. Am I missing anyone? No? Okay. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how we approach it. Um, you know, the uh, lion, lion tamer metaphor, I think, is working really well for us. Okay. Now we're beyond the humor piece. Um, so a little bit about the development so far. Um, you know, this all began with the Digital Curation Center in the United Kingdom had uh, uh, been working with their funders to create uh, their own online tool. Um, and so. It, I believe the um, uh, requirements from funding bodies in the UK have been a little more established than they are here in the US. Um, and so uh, they had been increasingly asking for these plans, so the DCC uh, developed this tool. Um, and the tool is not only to develop a plan uh, for stewardship, uh, how to manage, but also stewardship of the data uh, that's often irreplaceable. So the DCC developed an online tool for use in creating plans for scholars. Uh, the tool is, uh, co is a, basically a comprehensive list <clears throat> of plan details that are required by uh, various funding bodies. Uh, it allows a scholar to complete relevant portions um, 
to create uh, to create a comprehensive plan according to their uh, their needs and the funders' needs. Um, uh, now that we've got um, similar requirements uh, coming uh, in the United States, um, we thought it was a good idea to look at their model and try to replicate some of those services here. Um, and if you look at the makeup of our group, you'll realize that it's not just a, a, a .edu issue. It's really um, uh, an issue for all kinds of um, uh, research and scholarly bodies, uh, museums and libraries, as well as um, well, anyone who gets funding uh, from a body that requires these uh, plans. Um, and really, the plan is a, a way for us uh, as uh, IT and library professionals to insinuate ourselves into the dis data discussion. Um, you know, we are information organization professionals. And I think, um, I think historically, the NSF has recognized uh, a nice role for the libraries in, um, what, in the work they fund. Uh, and that <clears throat> uh, this is uh, simply another way of them um, sort of saying that the library does have a role uh, in the scholarship process, and they like to see us involved. So um, the a goal of the project is to streamline the process to produce a credible and high-quality plan for managing data. Um, uh, to develop a plan for managing data. It's eight institutions coming together to develop a flexible online tool uh, to help researchers generate data management plans, <clears throat> leveraging the work um, of the data management plan online from the DCC. Uh, the tool development that we will do will have multiple phases. Uh, our goal is to have a usable tool uh, that creates uh, consistent uh, usable uh, data management plans because right now planning is pretty inconsistent. Um, uh, the plans themselves, uh, I think if you read the requirements, they're open to interpretation. Uh, what the tool will do is allow people to uh, interpret those rules, respond to them with uh, inline, online help at the same time. So um, institutions, they do rely a lot on soft funding. Um, agencies uh, have created a new demand um, in, in this uh, data management planning piece and you need to meet the plan or you don't get funded. And so we decided to work collaboratively to consolidate expertise and reduce costs. Uh, and really um, the goal of the tool is to begin helping researchers foc focus on the research. Um, not so much on requirements, really taking uh, some of the administrative piece away from uh, the grant application process. So these are basically uh, the components uh, of a data management plan. Um, you know, it requires you to have content characteristics. Um, so, you know, a, a bit about your data, you know, what standards your data will um, uh, live and work under uh, access to that data, you know, what sort of governance that um, you see is important, um, and uh, sharing and reuse policies, as well as uh, archiving and data archiving. So the funding agencies, um, you know, they, they have these data sharing requirements. Uh, so do a lot of um, uh, places you would publish uh, so it's really, um, you know, it, it's really uh, becoming an emerging uh, issue for a lot of folks, and we're hoping that the tool we create uh, is going to be flexible enough to meet all these needs. So a little bit about um, what it looks like at UCLA. Um, and I, you know, this is just, I wanted to kind of give you an overview of how we see the data management plan uh, working into the uh, grant application process at a place like UCLA, uh, just to sort of um, uh, give some background uh, and ways to think about um, working with uh, offices of contracts and grants or uh, vice chancellors for research, that sort of thing. Um, and we do have a, an office of contracts and grants at UCLA that oversees the process of applying for grants. 
uh, we will use this tool to in insinuate <coughs> uh, data management into that process. So by the application of uh, necessary and usable tools, uh, we hope to influence the process of grant application at the policy level. You know, why do we really want to do that? Um, well, first of all, people need to, need to develop these plans. Um, and historically, um, the IT and library infrastructures of the uh, institutes we represent um, don't really know what grants are being applied for, what grants have uh, necessarily been received on campus, what the IT and data requirements are for those grants. This is, um, uh, we hope that this is one salvo into getting us involved in that discussion so that um, as, uh, as grants uh, are applied for, as they're received on campus, uh, we may, um, uh, you know, we can provide usable tools for people to uh, comply with uh, the data management plans uh, as part of those grants. And hopefully we can put some business intelligence and, um, and do some planning of our own around what kind of research might be going on on campus. And, and hopefully with this information we can um, determine what kind of, uh, what, what data curation means for us and what kind of services uh, we need to um, develop on campus. Uh, the tool itself, I think one thing uh, to note, um, you know, from a UC perspective uh, is that the tool should be flexible and open enough for us to integrate with other uh, UC uh, campuses and requirements. So um, as things like Easy ID develop um, and we work this into the, um, uh, we work this DMP tool into the grant application process, you know, you can see a, a shining path down the road where as each uh, grant is applied for, uh, they receive an ID and we begin to uh, track them uh, from application to funded project to published work with the same tools. Um, and uh, we've uh, been able to get um, the attention of uh, research vice chancellors as well as uh, uh, the uh, UC Office of the President, UCOP, uh, to talk to us about uh, this data um, uh, data component of grant applications. So they're very interested in the work we're doing. Uh, they're very interested in how they might utilize the work we're doing within their own um, administrative structure. And I think um, one of the things uh, that I took away from uh, what Chris Borgman was talking about yesterday was really the, uh, the integration of um, uh, technology and policy. You know, this is exactly the kind of thing, this is exactly the integration of technology and, and policy, I think, that uh, it has a chance to um, open up some doors for us. So um, we can step a little bit higher here um, and talk a little bit about what we, kind of what we hope uh, this DMP becomes. Um, so, you know, we feel that not only is there value in creating plans tailored for the individual scholarship, uh, but there's great value being gained by the larger world of scholarship from gathering and connecting these data plans. Uh, we have a vision of a deep, rich resource where funders and researchers can see what previous work has been done, uh, what previous work has gone on, and in a perfect world where data standards and practices are known and can be used to influence project planning. So within the, the data tool, you'll be able to see previous plans, uh, you'll be able to see model plans, uh, that will include things like data standards. Hopefully, uh, some of these standards serendipitously will make it into new plans and <clears throat> that promise of standardization uh, gets one step closer to reality. But um, uh, scattered collaborators require integration and tools. Uh, some of the issues uh, that affect research uh, is metadata, a reliable framework for mining multimodal data, search engines, uh, and analytical tools, and we believe that um, the DMP will become part of that um, research administration landscape and hopefully part of the research landscape as well. Um, so this is the piece where I close my, um, my talk and turn it over to Trish, who's going to talk a, a lot more about uh, the actual data management plan, and we can talk more about 
my stuff later. I just want to say that um, uh, the data management plan is really not important. Um, it's the data that's important. Uh, the, D, uh, the data management planning tool is simply a means to an end. And what we hope to get out of it um, is um, to uh, provide a way to handle asynchronous, long-lived conversations around data with our faculty on campus. Okay, um, we're going to shift gears a wee bit here and, um, and uh, drill down and take a look at the data management planning tool itself. And um, when Todd uh, said that we want your feedback and, and we want your help in shaping this tool, is um, I would suggest it's to your benefit because this is something that is going to be available to the community at large, um, both as a hosted service that you can come and use or you can take the code away and shape that yourself. So it's really something that, that we think is, is a service to not just the partners, but to the community as a whole. So basically, um, as Todd said, um, the DMP tool, as we're calling it, it will produce an editable document for submission to a funding agency. That uh, uh, somebody who has to submit to NSF or NIH, they can get a document and um, they can append that to their grant um, and they can um, go ahead and, and, and submit that. Phase one will provide the foundation for future releases. It's really, um, uh, I would say, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles we'd like to see right off the bat, but we do think it builds um, a foundation for um, adding bells and whistles as, as we go forward. Um, and it will allow us to accommodate versions as funding um, uh, requirements change. This is early days. Um, January 18th was the day that NSF declared the, um, that uh, you had to submit a data management plan. We don't know how those are going to be judged. We need to remain nimble. We need to create a tool that's going to allow us to, to respond to that changing community and also be able to respond to new stakeholders that want to use the tool, that want to contribute to the tool. As I said, it's, um, it's going to be open sourced. Um, on Bitbucket, a little bit later, I have a URL where the Bitbucket um, place is where you can go and look at the requirements. You can um, take those away. You can um, think about those yourself. Um, and one of the most important things um, in phase one of the tool that, that was a, um, a, 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 a drop dead requirement is the partner institutions needed to have the ability to do local branding and to contribute local resources. It, you know, when in this current economic environment, it's really important for the, for the libraries and the, and the people involved in this to say, this is happening on, on our campus, in our library, how can we help you? Um, and the tool itself, it's not just all about technology. And it's really taking intellectual input um, from librarians, from experts on how to manage data and, a, and integrating that with technology in order to help the user. And um, we see that there's four types of users of the data management plan or, four, or, or and administrators or actors or whatever your word is for it. There's number one is the researcher, number two is the editor, three is the funder, and four is the institution. And I'm going to go through some of those to give you an idea of how they might use the tool. Um, so in the next few screens, I'm going to be showing you um, some wireframes that we've created for the tool based on the requirements. Um, these are, uh, are, as I said, they're just wireframes, so there's, there might be typos, the text is going to change, et cetera, but I think it, it will give you a, a better idea of what we're talking about. So if a researcher wants to create a data management plan, let's say we're talking about a researcher from the University of California um, wanting to create a data management plan, this will be the first page they see. Um, the, up at the top, um, there'll be some sort of branding that says, uh, um, uh, this is the data management planning tool. It'll tell you um, who can use the tool, how the tool works, and how to start. On the other side of the screen, and these, um, a lot of these items will remain constant throughout all of, of the data management planning tool, you'll see help. 
We think help is um, going to be a big issue in this tool, both help for the researcher, what is a data management plan, and also for librarians and, and other stakeholders as they're learning um, to enter into this space. I think it's, it's we need to come together and, and provide that level of help. Sample plans, um, that's what we hear about already all the time. Can you just give me a sample plan that I can copy? Um, sure. Um, we want to be able to create a place where a lot of uh, good and bad and, oh, and just straight ahead um, data management plans can live. The other thing we're going to do is um, uh, create a news resource. Um, this will done, be done via WordPress. We'll have various WordPress feeding into um, the news uh, resource talking about what's happening with funding agencies, what's happening maybe at institutions, um, if there's another um, resource out there that we need to take a look at. So once um, somebody has said, okay, I'm going to use this data management planning tool and they start to log on, they get to this second screen. Um, and this is where they um, are, are asked to select the institution that they're working with. Um, and so that's, and once they select that institution, they get um, branding. Um, and in this case, um, UCLA, the UCSD libraries, but also the UC libraries as a whole and the California Digital Library um, coming together to present this tool. But as I said, this is going to be a tool that's open to anybody um, can come and use this tool and they will get the generic branding. But if you're a user, a partner in this project, you, and affiliated with one of the partner institutions, you'll get additional help and links to resources that are at your own local institution. So um, it's it's uh, it, it's you'll get that uh, extra level of help and also contact information for for personal help. The login screen will look slightly different um, once you select your institution um, because every institution has its own authentication system. So, um, I, and I present this just because it's, it's not a fancy screen or anything like that, but it's one of the realities that we're dealing with in building the tool. Some people use Shibboleth, some people use LDAP, um, so we really need to, to be able to provide for that. So now our user has logged in, they've entered their, their it's a return user, and so this is what um, they're going to see. Um, they'll be presented with a view of their work and the options that are available to them. Number one, do you want to create a new plan? And so you'll see a drop-down box with all the various funding agencies um, that we have included in the data management plan itself, um, and the NSF and the various NSF directorates. Um, but also NIH, um, IMLS, um, and other um, uh, funding agencies. If you have an existing plan, um, you can go back and, um, and then the second one there is an existing plan uh, that uh, you can see the status of. You provided responses for four out of the five questions. Um, you can go in and finish that plan. You can edit it or generate it, meaning you want to finish it and take it away, delete it, um, comment on it. If you're working with other people on creating this data management plan, if you're um, working with a team, they can come in and look at that and comment um, and, um, and work together on it. Um, you can also publish that plan. That's that part where you want to make that available um, to um, generally to the community at large. The third option there, and I think this is, um, uh, is going to be interesting to see how this actually works, but I think it's a very important concept. Let's say that this researcher created a data management plan, they submitted it to an agency, and maybe they want to go back and use that plan again. But you see that alert right there that says, uh-oh, um, this agency has made some changes. Be, you know, you need to think about it. Here's a link to the, the new agency requirements that you're probably going to want to take a look at um, so you can go back and, and make those needed changes. On um, the, the far side of the screen, um, you'll see the news. Um, again, that's going to re remain constant um, um, in, on the generic pages. So let's say that user um, is moving forward and says, okay, I'm going to create a new plan. 
And um, so this is just a generic screen on um, creating the plan. Up top, you'll see the, the, the plan type that's going to be created, um, the question text, et cetera. You'll see um, the progress through the plan um, and, and um, how, far, how far along you are. Um, but let's look at that um, other side of the screen. And remember uh, when I said if you're an organization um, and you'll have access to specialized help, et cetera. So uh, your, the resources there are um, your institution's resources. Let's say at UCLA or UCSD, you have um, prepared a tremendous amount of, of information on data management planning. This is going to be the place to um, link to that information and inform that user about that information. Um, also, I think, and this is going to be very key, is um, if your um, institution has a tool that can be used as part of the data management plan. For example, UC San Diego uses Chronopolis. This is where they can put um, a link to Chronopolis. Um, the uh, CDL, we have a tool called Merit. It's our, our repository services. This We can put Merit or Easy ID or one of our services there. This is also where you can have resources for the funder. Um, if the funder has a specific um, information on this question uh, or general information, and then um, finally help on this specific question. So let's look at it as a little bit more uh, nuanced version of that, um, a little bit more filled out. Um, so this um, uh, question is, uh, what is the period of retention for your data? Um, and this is the, uh, the help text from our colleagues at, at UVA who have um, uh, are going through the NSF engineering directorate and, and um, building um, the tool for this. Um, you can see that the person has um, uh, answered three questions or, or three of the um, uh, uh, progress through the plan. Um, there's the question help down at the bottom, text that can be incorporated, um, and then to the side you'll see the resources that are available. Um, the data management resources at UC, or um, the funders, uh, or to um, the question-specific help. So again, we think that um, it's really pulling all of that information together in one place. The other thing um, that is uh, going to be available to the researcher is, um, you know, and I kind of think that this is just give me the money kind of thing, just show me what it is I have to do. I just want to preview what those, uh, what the funding agencies are asking for. Select a funding agency to see its data management plan requirements. And um, again, this is pulling together just that succinct information to say, you need to do X, Y, and Z. Um, and again, I think that will help the researchers um, begin to understand what the requirements are and what it is they need to do. Um, and again, on the other side, you'll see resources that um, uh, are appropriate to this. So that's um, uh, just the screenshots in a nutshell of, uh, and I didn't go through all of them obviously because there's the, the generation of the plan itself and the format, et cetera. Um, and I just want to summarize um, for this user type one what they can do when they use the, um, the DMP tool. They can establish an account, view sample plans, um, preview the funder requirements, create, save, edit, publish a plan, um, view and use past plans that have been successful or not successful. They can use help, both um, generic help and at the institutional level. Um, and then view news and, and latest changes. Um, and so this, in this case, um, it's a, a data one researcher. And um, you can see there's a little corny mock-up of a, a data one um, DMP tool with, uh, I slapped the logos on them. So the second type of user or um, actor is um, the editor. And I, th I think in a sense, this is kind of the heart and soul of the data management planning tool. Um, this is kind of the groovy editor. And um, the editor's roles and responsibilities are to um, create and maintain those funder templates, to monitor what the funder is asking for, 
um, that if there's a new funder that comes on, on the horizon that the partners are interested in, in interacting with and, and um, creating a data management plan for, um, they can create a, a new uh, funder template. Um, if there's a new version, as we saw in the data management planning tool, if, if an agency changes, you need to update and create a new version of that tool. That's something that, that um, the editor will do. And creating the question text and the accompanying help with that question text. Um, revise and edit um, as necessary. And um, the editor is from a partner institution. And we really need to trust this person because what they do is going to apply to um, uh, everybody uh, in the partnership and anybody who is using the tool. So it's, it's a big responsibility they have. Um, and so that's like listing all of the different um, uh, people who will contr be contributing in this editor role down there. Um, at an institutional level, um, I want to talk just really briefly. Uh, that's a, a third type of user or um, person who will provide input on the tool. Um, and it's a range of partners, I think, as Todd was sharing in his um, earlier comments, um, at an institutional level, um, you have the libraries, um, administrative offices, data centers, faculty, and researchers interacting with this tool. Um, and on the UC campus, um, it's the sponsored projects office, the contracts and grants. Um, contracts and grants people don't want to be bothered with creating a data management plan. They don't, they don't have that expertise. They're happy to work with us on that and, and um, they want to contribute to that. Um, the Office of Research, the same. Uh, UC um, last year received over $600 million in NSF funding. They're very um, uh, aware of this new requirement. Um, and they think it's going to be a competitive edge if we put something together that is going to help um, researchers get their um, data management plan out the door without having to get tangled up in all the details. Um, also, um, IP, the tech transfer people. Last week I got a call from um, the UCOP, um, which is the main administrative offices for UC, saying, we hear there's this data management planning tool and what's our, the IP issues related to it? And I said, oh, okay, great. Um, so, I, you know, I think there's a lot of people coming together um, in this area and um, it's, it's, and the why I have um, libraries bolded is because as a, a, a neutral service organization on the campus, I think we're uniquely positioned to bring these, these various partners together to work together in new ways and collaborate. Um, the faculty um, that, uh, this is uh, um, Jim Carey from UC Davis. He um, is, we've been working with him a lot on, uh, he's been uh, submitting grants to NIH and NSF, and he's given us an opportunity to really step back and think, um, what do faculty need in this space? And um, he's been very helpful. Um, the institution, um, their um, roles uh, will um, to create and maintain relevant inf information, um, resource links to um, resources on their campuses, um, institution-specific information and tools, and local help when necessary. Um, also, uh, generate reports. So imagine if you're at UC and um, you have you have this uh, uh, somewhat a, a database of all of the materials uh, that have been submitted um, or, or data management plans that have been generated to the NSF Engineering Directorate, for example. You can go in there and look. And, and get a good idea of what kind of data is going to be generated um, and if it's something that the University of California is going to have to manage for the long term, I think it'll, it'll help. It's a first step in trying to understand um, uh, what that's going to look like. And also the institutions are going to be users of that tool. So the fourth type of user um, is a funder, and I think that this is going to be the trickiest one, and um, one that we do um, hope will contribute to the tool, um, whether directly or indirectly. Um, we think it's, it's crucial to have funders be able to communicate with us about um, change to existing requirements or new requirements. Um, we're going to be very, very dependent on that. Um, and we would love to engage um, those funders in such a way that um, we can have easy access um, to the information and that they can add resources about a specific funding program. As I said, um, that we're going to start off with um, 
and the NSF um, uh, general data management plan, but then drill down into the various directorates, um, NIH. Um, we will also be creating a data management plan for that, um, IMLS. And um, the partners are coming together to brainstorm, okay, what are some of the other um, um, agencies? USGS, I know, is, is very busy on creating their own requirements, EPA, um, DOE, et cetera. So um, these are early days, but um, I think uh, we need to uh, figure out what, what other agencies we're going to tackle. Just really quickly, this is very tiny print, but um, I would be remiss if I didn't um, give a shout out to um, the team um, who are coming together to create this data management um, planning tool. Um, we're, again, as, as um, Todd said, we're, we're working with the DCC, um, really taking a lot of the thought that they put into their tool and um, recalibrating it for use in the US. Um, and they are continuing to work with us. And it's great because Martin Donnelly, who's on our team, he'll say, you know, I wish we would have done differently. And so we'll say, yes. And so we, we're kind of at that opportunity where we can, we can um, uh, do a next generation tool. Um, we're also working with uh, uh, the Data One folks are on our team, as um, well as, as developers with that at the California Digital Library. Um, but then also UC San Diego is um, thinking about it from um, uh, an intellectual perspective of what a data management plan needs to look like. Um, and UIUC, somebody from um, their campus CIO office who is thinking about the authentication piece, piece which we're very happy somebody's thinking about. Um, so this is where we turn to all of you. Um, and we, um, we do recognize that these are early days and that building a, a tool that will satisfy the local um, and the general is going to be really tricky. Um, and it's going to be difficult to bring all those stakeholders together um, and, get, and get funder participation. Um, but uh, we hope the tool will be available soon. And um, we invite the group to participate both in helping us uh, uh, shape the tool um, and um, inform the tool, et cetera, and use the tool. So I turn it over to all of you for questions at this point. Questions? <laughs> um, Sharon asked uh, when the tool is going to be ready. Um, we're hoping that um, the technology behind the tool is not um, too complex. And um, so we're hoping to have something out the door in the next um, two to three months. Um, so, and one thing that we would really like to ask the community to help us with is testing. Um, so uh, that's uh, not just our own internal testing, but testing um, by the community at large and, and providing feedback. So if anybody wants to volunteer for that, we're happy to have some um, testers. So. There's a lot of information uh, that goes into um, these data management plans. Uh, so we're, you know, what, what we have to do is bring together a lot of uh, institutional resources to develop the uh, inline and context help. And so that's, uh, you know, part of it is uh, programming, but a lot of it really is the uh, administrative information that needs to go into these plans and the, and the, uh, and the help pieces that um, uh, demystify what a data management plan is and help people really understand sort of the core requirements and, and allow them to develop a plan, I think, um, effectively and, and as quickly as possible. So that's really um, a big piece. So we, uh, let's see, uh, sample plans um, is right on the front screen. And uh, then under the DMP resources at the top, um, that's where we anticipate that we'll have uh, um, some sample plans. And what's really surprising um, in, in within UC, 
we've you know already uh, cranked out a bunch of these data management plans, and we've asked, oh, would you mind sharing those? Oh, yeah, no, not at all. Great. So we've we've seen people really wanting to share those. Correct. Yes. Yes. Um, I was wondering, uh, for the uh, for the, those institutions that are are not one of the listed institutions, will there um, maybe you could say a little bit more about whether uh, the say I if I don't have a reposit if I'm from an institution that doesn't hasn't set up a repository or various services that for hosting uh, and, st and storing and preserving my data. Um, Will there, are you acting, aren't you collaborating and coordinating um, sort of uh, what kind of, what kind of uh, services could be offered collectively through the people who are promoting this plan? Um, we haven't talked too much about that directly, but I think um, uh, among our various institutions, we do have a lot of resources. But also, um, so I think collectively, we will be able to offer services to the community to actually um, manage and store that data, but also we think it's important to um, point to um, archives that are already existing within the community. Um, so, for example, um, Data One, as it starts to build itself up, um, Data Conservancy, those are places where um, we can point people to as a solution to share their data or open context for um, uh, archaeological data, etc. So, yes, I think that will be part of um, what we do is, is um, you know, providing those resources for actually managing the data, not just uh, producing the plan. Yeah, that seems like a really useful thing, because I can't think of any other place that has a collecting point for, well, what, what are my solutions, what, what can I do? Correct. Other questions? Has there been any talk about costing models for once you have your data management plan approved as part of your grant? Um, what kind of charges would we, be, would we be able, would it help us to figure out what needs to go into the grant? Because once these data management plans are planned and accepted, it's going to cost money to, for the researcher to actually put them into um, practice and keep them up. Has there been any talk about costing models? No. You, you take that and then I'll, I'll follow up. Okay. Um, what we're trying to do uh, at UCLA is as we go through the Office of Contracts and Grants, um, uh, the workflow by which a, a faculty member will apply for a grant um, will, if they have a data management requirement, uh, they'll also get a, a a, a series of questions about IT requirements. Um, and as um, our, our goal is to take both of those pieces of information through the process and when the grant is awarded, um, there will be some knowledge on campus of uh, uh, what that footprint might look like uh, for the purposes of uh, the Office of Information Technology and the library in order to do some forecasting as to what kind of services we anticipate coming onto campus. Yeah, and I think um, that's a really important question in that, so the plans that we've already helped on, um, we have a, a, our own repository and um, uh, we work with the researcher um, to understand how much data they're going to be generated, just a best guess, and then we can give them a cost estimate on um, what it will cost to um, have their data in the repository for one year, two year, three years, et cetera. Um, and so the, I, I was very surprised in um, the people that we've worked with and have given them a cost number um, that they are like, oh, okay, great. You know, they're happy just to have something, to, then they take that and plug that into the budget of their grant. Um, we, um, within the University of California, um, we really, the, um, working with um, the folks at UCSD and uh, UCLA, we really want to, of come up with a, a united picture of what that costing looks like and I think we, we see that as, as um, a task that we need to talk about sooner rather than later so but we have the pieces we just need to fit them together. Okay, thank you. You may 
have said this, and I may have missed it, so forgive me if I'm asking something you covered, but are you um, keeping track of plan revisions? Are you keeping track of commentary that might come back on plans or any um, rejected plans, for lack of a better term? Um, when you say plan revisions, do you mean versions? Yeah, versions or, you know, if there's an early review and some commentary comes back on how that plan should be revised. Um, versions of plans we will keep track of. Um, we can associate, um, you know, uh, versions of, of various plans. But it's going to be up to the um, uh, person who submitted the grant to come back and supply that information on um, uh, and, and we would love to hear that, and that's something that you know we um, will will push on. And I think that's a that's a great point to think about how we can get um, feedback um, and uh, comments on the grants, and have that in the if there's anything on the data management plan to include that. Or to really pull out those that are real model, true model plans. That yeah. Over time, have proven the exemplars. Them. Yeah, that's a good point. Just, uh, I was just wondering with a kind of a distributed model for updating and developing it, like you were saying that uh, a partner might be editing across all of the different instances. I was wondering how you were going to synchronize that or, or update each separate install. Well, um, and, and if Todd wants to jump in here, is we um, will have a uh, a production environment and a staging environment and um, we'll sync up and I we have not worked out the details of this yet but I imagine we'll say um, uh, our, we'll um, publish a new version of the tool you know once a month or as needed um, and all of that material that's in stage will move to production I think it will probably be a pretty straightforward process. And do, do you envision opening it up to a lot of other institutions that aren't partners right now? Oh, yeah. absolutely. And that's, um, um, like I said, that uh, we, um, this will be an open source piece of code um, that can be used by anybody. And um, our, our feeling is during phase one, we just kind of want to get something out the door um, and scope it. And then uh, I think we'll kind of step back and say, um, what new partners do we want to bring in? And we would be um, happy to do that at that point to have more contributors um, contributing to the tool. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would agree with that. I think the, uh, the tool uh, itself um, will be strengthened by the number of, uh, by each participating partner. Uh, you know, it's really um, uh, a tool that becomes better as the more people use it, hopefully. Uh, we can bring more examples about well-written plans, um, more talk about data standards and practices across uh, partner institutions, and, and that hopefully will um, help us uh, in the long run facilitate more data discussions. Um, I think this is really pretty cool. This is um, a, a tool in the largest sense, right? So you have the data management plan tool that can be used to generate a plan, but you've got all these resources around it, so it's really a tool in the largest sense. Um, so the question related to sort of partners, I think I heard you say members or affiliations. Um, so is your model that the partners would help develop the product, or are you talking about sort of um, partners in this particular instance who would then be able to be trusted editors to contribute to this instance, or would they, it would be partners who help develop it and then the source is open and everybody else sort of takes on those different roles themselves? Could you, what's your vision there? Uh, I think all of those things are true. I mean, if you look at, um, uh, right now when we talk about partners, we're talking about uh, uh, you know, university libraries who are developing, university libraries and, and museums uh, who are developing data management plans for their faculty. Uh, but we're also talking about um, participants who um, are editors within that process. And these can be IT personnel, uh, they can be uh, folks in the library, they can be people in um, uh, administrative services. But we're also talking about uh, the funding agencies themselves going in and helping us um, uh, develop and formulate the tool. I think some partners will contribute code, some partners will contribute um, uh, 
information about plans. Uh, some partners will uh, help us keep the information about what requirements are current. So we really think that um, as the tool grows, um, these, uh, these roles will become um, very clear. Uh, and um, as you access the tool to create a particular plan, you'll be um, confident that the information you're receiving and the help uh, you get is current, up to date, and exactly what your need is for creating this plan for this particular um, funding agency. Um, based on your personal needs within your school. Could you say a little bit more about intellectual property and how this tool might relate to patent applications or commercial outcomes? Uh -huh. <laughs> So um, uh, each um, uh, well, so the the tool will allow you to create a plan. Um, it is uh, tied to your institutional identification. You know, you you'll have to log in. Um, uh, plans that are created are not by default made public. So I think if you created a plan and you wanted to. Um, uh, you know, keep that plan uh, uh, as you would um, any piece of uh, information about a, um, a patent application or a project that's going to lead to uh, some patented information. You would, you would treat that like you would any other piece of information that you would uh, put in and put through the grant process. Uh, so it, it, uh, is there anything you'd like to add here? I think there's the, um, the, the plan itself, but um, our, um, when I was on the phone last week with the tech transfer people at OP, they were getting really nervous that there was intellectual property that was going to be generated as part of a grant. That's always been there. Um, and so, and that's what I stressed to the um, tech transfer office that this is nothing new, the intellectual property issues of data that are generated as part of a grant. You know, it's, it's always been a reality. But I think when it becomes um, a little bit more focused, a little bit more um, uh, framed in terms of uh, there's this piece of data that you need to save and share, that's when the university gets a little bit nervous. And um, so I think one of the things that we really want to do is to kind of tamp down that nervousness is to have them involved in this process from the get-go, have them um, feeding and, and helping us shape um, the tool. And I was quite pleased that they reached out to us and, um, and because they, uh, they, they're, they're the experts and they can um, add that language about um, data sharing and intellectual property issues. So, um, other questions? Yes, hi. Uh, could you clarify a little bit more your response to the cost model question? In, because the way it was answered, it sounded as though you were just talking about storage costs, not curation costs. Um, that's, a, that's a really good point. And um, so within the University of California, um, we are very much hoping to work together to um, keep our costs down. And um, we're um, in the, uh, at the California Digital Library and the UC Curation Center, we have modeled our costs and we have a better understanding of what, what those costs are. Um, but to the UC community, um, our goal is to only charge for storage. Um, and so the, um, the, the costs for the actual management and the curation of the data, um, that's something that we, we um, at the California Digital Library are prepared to subsidize. Uh, um, but the, again, these are early days, and those are things that, that we want to work with our partners on to better understand what that cost model will look like going forward. So, and yeah, everybody, when I, I don't know if we were talking about this last night, is um, when Princeton came out with the data space um, saying if you pay $8,500, you can store your 
well, how, how much data was it? Half a gigabyte or, I don't know, half of something forever for $8,500. We thought, um, we heard from a lot of people that that was really compelling. And so we would like to come up with a number that says, if you pay us a million dollars, we'll <laughs> keep your data, your terabyte of data safe forever. So, um, you know, I think, uh, again, we need to kind of get out at, at our, our uh, start doing some math and trying to figure out what that's going to look like. So, yeah, a couple of a couple of things. Um, over the past year or so, uh, I've been looking at data. Uh, me and a few people have been looking at data on the UCLA campus, trying to get a handle on um, what uh, what researchers are producing, what they're storing, where it might be, how much there is how many data closets are on campus. Um, and, you know, to anyone who's going to start a process like that, don't. <laughs> it's, um, it's just been quite eye-opening, the amount uh, and um, uh, lack of oversight, um, uh, you know, uh, really the information that I could get uh, from uh, our faculty uh, based on their scholarship um, was really eye-opening. And I think if we uh, are to be successful with data curation um, or uh, have data services uh, as, a, um, uh, as a library or a library IT combination, um, it all begins with us kind of knowing what the data landscape on campus looks like in order for us to sit down and create what kind of tools and services uh, that might fit on campus. Uh, this data management planning tool is uh, simply one step uh, and one step that, um, that can't be avoided by people um, developing scholarship on campus. They need to create these data plans now for certain funding agencies. Uh, this is the uh, really, I think, one of the first times we've been able to go in and, and get some uh, real requirements, uh, some real knowledge about projects um, as the projects develop, as opposed to as, you know, after the fact, um, you know, I've published this here, library, please take it. So I think, you know, um, the, the notion of us working within that um, administrative workflow uh, hopefully will lead to a much more, uh, uh, a much deeper knowledge of what actually goes on on campus. Uh, so that hopefully will allow us then uh, to create custom services uh, for our own campuses uh, based on the actual scholarship that's going on on campus. I think, yeah, so uh, just I want to thank Tricia for um, helping me this morning and thank you all for coming. We're out of time. Um, and if you have a few questions, I think we'll hang out.